Hey everybody, I'm Ted from Tebex. In this tutorial, we are looking at how you can set up a local testing environment for Rust. We will set up a normal server. We will set up a staging branch server. The staging branch gets all the updates before they get pushed every month to the live client. This can be interesting if you're a map maker or a plugin developer to see if any of the upcoming updates break anything in your code. And once we have that staging branch server running, we will quickly look at how we can install Carbon. Both Umoth and Carbon have their own staging options. I decided to go with Carbon. It will automatically update itself as soon as there is an update available. This way, I don't have to manually update anything. The server automatically makes sure that I always have the newest version. Setting up a local testing server can also be interesting for server owners. If you, for whatever reason, currently don't have the options to rent more servers, you can just host one locally for free. Once you have everything figured out or even completely configured, you can then take that plugin and the configuration and just transfer it over to your live server. So let's do a little bit of housekeeping. We're going to need a few things to get this working. One is Steam CMD. This is the program that we will use to download the server files, both for the staging and for the normal server. The normal Rust client and the Rust staging client are two complete different clients. So make sure that you always have the correct one running when you're trying to connect to your server. So let's get a server running. I have a Rust server folder. Inside here, I made a Steam CMD folder, a staging server folder, and also a normal server folder. These two are completely empty at the moment. Inside of Steam CMD, I already downloaded the zip file, and I have an empty text file that we will need in a second. Going to this page, you can go to download Steam CMD for Windows, and then we have the link up here. So now what we need to do is we need to say Steam CMD force installation directory, and then set the directory that we want our files to go to. So I already made a folder. I'm going to click on this icon. This will allow me to copy the path. Then where it says C, I'm going to make sure I'm not selecting anything extra and just replace the path with where I want my files to go to. Then after that, it says login anonymously. So we're just going to log in anonymously to Steam. That is a feature. We don't need to use our username and password. And then we're telling it what to download, AKA the Rust server files. That is what this number represents. And then when it's done, we're going to say quit. For this to work, we need to say save as all files. And then I'm going to save it as download.bat. We go back to our Steam CMD folder. We can see we now have our download.bat. When we run this, it will automatically start downloading the update for Steam CMD. So we will get some more files in here in a little bit once it's done extracting. There we go. And then it will automatically set those properties and also log into Steam and start downloading our server files. It's now checking if we have enough room on our disk. If you get an error or if it just closes right after this, you probably do not have enough room on your hard disk. Our server files are now downloading. While this is going, I'm going to go to the normal server files and also create a new text file. Inside of here, we're going to create our start file. So we can see the download is still going on. This one is a little bit longer. We're going to start rustdedicated.exe and then we're going to give it a whole lot of different properties. A few things, always change the password. If this is a public server, there's a lot more things to change, like what kind of map, what kind of name, description, website, etc. Since this is just a testing server, I'm just going to give these default properties, but I am going to change the password just so it's not the default password. Other than that, all I'm going to do is save this as a BAT file. So once again, save as all files and then just give it a name. So I'm going to say start.bat. That is here. Then this is almost finished. Once it's finished, it's going to verify everything. And once that is done, it should automatically close itself. So let's wait for that to happen. So it ended with app fully installed. It was probably too quick to see. And now those files are here and our start file is already ready. So if we double click, this should start up rustdedicated.exe and then this should boot up your server. If you're looking for the page that has these scripts, both for Steam CMD and also these start scripts that I used, that will be the Rustified page in the video description. If you see this message saying couldn't load server, this is just in regards to the save file. Don't worry, as you will see, if you give it about five to 10 seconds, maybe a little bit longer, depending on your hardware, it should continue because it's just generating a lot of data since this is the first time you are starting up your server. This should be the end. We'll get some more files. And now you can see, we see our name. 
Now, Bradley is spawned, so now I know for sure that the server has booted. Let's go to our client and let's say connect localhost colon 28015. If you change the port inside of your start script, of course, use the port that you changed it to. This is also the port that you need to port forward for other people to be able to join your server. But that is not something that we will cover in this video. So this should be almost done. And here we are on our server. Just make yourself admin and you can test anything you want. Let's do the same thing for a staging branch server. I'm going to quit the game because we need to have a different client. I also closed my server. Let's go back to Steam CMD and edit the download.bat file. We're going to change the directory. So we're going to once again get the path. Then we add this to the end to make sure that we're not just downloading the server files, but we'll also say we want the staging files. We don't have to do save as again, we can just save, go back to Steam CMD and start the download. Force directory is set to staging server. We go there, we have a Steam apps folder. Same thing as before, we are just gonna wait for this to download, but we also need a start file Let's just copy the same start file that we have for our normal server. Copy it over here. Let's edit this. And then let's change the name to staging. Never use the same password, like change it to something way more secure. Then we can just save and then let's wait for this to finish. And I'll be back once it... Let's wait for this to finish and I'll be back once... This is done. Let's start up our staging server by just double clicking the start file, same as we've done before, and wait for this to boot up. The server is done booting up. Let's go to Steam, make sure that we have the staging client, and then use exactly the same command to connect to our server. Connect localhost colon 28015. If you want to know what is available on the staging, you can see on the Rust commits website what they are working on. Not everything that you see here is directly available inside of staging, but when they do a push, a lot of these things will be available for you to mess with before it's live on the normal client. For me, loading into staging seems to always take way longer. So keep that in mind. Performance may vary, at least for me in my experience. After quite a while, we are in the server. Let's install Carbon on our staging server. Let's disconnect from the server. I'm also closing the server. We're then going to the Carbon Releases page. Since we're running Windows, we're going to say Carbon Windows Debug. Let's download that zip file. Let's go back to our staging server folder and where we have Rust dedicated. Let's just drag that in here. Then let's start our server again and wait for this to boot up. As you can see, it's now done loading. It registered Carbon and all the different modules. And we can see down here, the server is done booting. And also it says what version of Carbon we're currently running for staging. This red message that is blurred out is not about Carbon. This is about the app and contains my IP address. But as you can see, Carbon is fully running on a staging server, self-updating. This way you're testing your plugins on the newest Rust version, on the newest Carbon version, using the newest versions of Harmony and C Sharp. It's as easy as that. Hopefully this was helpful. If you're not done watching yet, you can click here on the right for our latest release or on the left for something that we think suits you best. If you think I want even more, of course, feel free to subscribe. This way you will be notified when we release new content every Friday. And as always, thank you for watching and good luck with your Tevex store.